Yep. yep. Lift. Got him. Oh, that's better. It's a better one. This is the bit. You can probably soften up a bit now. He's off yep. the reef. Yeah, good. This is sometimes where they can throw a, throw a hook. So we just go, yeah, keep pressure on him, but not too, don't have to go super hard. Now you've got him off the reef. Color. I think it's what we want. It's a snapper. Oh, yes. It's a snapper. And it's yeah. in the net. Yes, yeah, one down. <laughs> you beauty. Today we're fishing with Tim, who originally hails from the ACT, now calls Brisbane home. He's just got himself into soft plastics fishing and he's been targeting flathead and other species in his local waters of Brisbane, but he's never caught an offshore snapper. And today, my job is to help fix that little problem. You ready, mate? Just looking forward to it. We're excited. A, we're a long way offshore. Yes, we are. In a bit of a hike, but I think this is where we'll find him. Beautiful. Strap on, let's go and see what this sound are shows us. Helping another angler catch a specific fish is often more satisfying than catching one yourself. But this job comes with plenty of pressure, being that Tim has travelled to be here and is expecting me to get the job done. Why have we come so far out today, Nigel? Like, in the last few years, we've got warmer than normal water temperatures, and we're five to seven years ago, we were catching lots of snapper in close in winter. Now I'm finding these fish are in deeper water, which it's a bit of a pain. I think this is where the fish are accumulating, probably because they like the water temperature in the deeper water to spawn. And I'm thinking we're out in 70 to 80, 90 metres today. I think that's where we'll find the fish. Excellent. Hopefully. Sometimes it doesn't take long to find exactly what you're looking for. Oh yes, here we go, here we go. Look at that. Now that's exactly what I wanted to see out here. So we've got a couple of big arches on the bottom by an arch at dark line on the sounder. We've got bait up high. And we've also got within that bait, we've got some big red streaks in the middle and I'm pretty sure those are going to be snapping They're up off the bottom, which means they might be active. Excellent. Fingers crossed. Once you've found them, you have to get fishing as fast as possible. Just setting up a few outfits for the day at the moment. I'm going to use a mixed approach, some soft plastics and some baits, just to see what is going to be the best. It's good to mix it up. And I'm going to keep my outfits simple. We've got what you'd call light to medium weight spin outfits. They're all in that four to eight kilogram weighting of rod. The braids are 20 to 30 pound. I'm going to be fishing with a 25 pound leader. And it's a good mix for out in the deeper waters. It's, it's relatively light, it's got a fine diameter, so it's gonna make baits and lures look natural. And it's gonna give you a little bit of authority should a big fish wanna run back down to the reef. Snapper are a fish that hunt in schools, but they can be fussy at times, and I want to give Tim the best chance of hooking one. So I have a few options rigged up, hoping that these fish down deep will find at least one of them tempting. Today we're going to put a couple of soft plastics down into the water and one bait and just see what the fish want to eat the most. Obviously just if you look at it you can see it's got a very different profile small, easy to eat, and it's got a, an action of its own, whereas your bait, it's gonna look more like something dead that's drifting down, but it does offer a bigger profile and a bit of lively sense. We'll find out fairly soon what they wanna to eat. Today, it's all about catching an offshore snapper for Tim. So we are gonna fish baits and plastics, but I reckon being that he loves his soft plastics, I'll get a bonus point if I can catch you one on a placky. Oh, sound yeah. good? Very good. Bonus points for me always sound good. <laughs> The sounder is looking better and better, and I'm starting to feel that we're in with a really good shot in this spot. Might be there, eh? Yep, yep, lift. Got him. Oh, that's better. It's a better one. Okay. Yeah. Good. Go, 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 go. No slack line. Got him? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, there you go. Good. Yes. There we go. Yes, Tim. Now we're that's in. That's what we wanted. <laughs> come on. A big school of fish just come through the sounder, too. I'm, I am going to keep this plastic out here. Yep. Because we may double this up. It's a schooling fish, so when they come through, they come through in numbers. This is the bit. You can probably soften up a bit now. He's off yeah. the reef. Yeah, good. Sometimes where they can throw a, throw a hook, so we just go, yeah, keep pressure on him, but not too, don't have to go super hard. Now you've got him off the reef. Color. I think it's what we want. It's a snapper. Oh, yes. It's a snapper. And it's yeah. in the net. Yes, Woo! one down. <laughs> You're dirty. Yes, mate. That's the one. <laughs> well it was done. worth the travel. It was. We did it hard coming out here. It's a bit of a lumpy ocean. And this is the start. We had them on the sand. And now the trick with snapper is they won't always bite. They're a very temperamental fish at times. Very tide driven, very moon driven. Sometimes I don't even know what driven. They just sometimes do not want to eat. So when you get them to bite, it's a good thing. 
and there's a lot of fish on that sound and I'm picking that if we hang around and wait for a tide turn, these might just start getting bigger. Excellent. A bit of pressure's off, it's on a soft plastic. <laughs> it is a snapper, I'm feeling a lot more relieved. Excellent. Well done, mate, well done. Let's get into some more. It's waking up, what is it? I'll be, uh, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel snappery. Nah, it's a bit pearly or something It's not like a that. big pool. That's not our desired species, flicker in. Little pearl perch. Now the interesting bit, that's a three quarter ounce jig head, and I just changed that one before to a half ounce and it got eaten straight away, which means the fish are feeding subtly, so they want something really slowly coming down, so it very much looks like a dying bait fish. So that's a heavier jig head, I'm gonna change it for you. Let's go back. And we're going to make that lighter and hopefully catch some more snappers. Fish like snapper can be cautious and changing lure weight sometimes makes all the difference. Bit of burly into the water never hurts your chances. Bring fish to you, it makes it a whole lot easier. There, yep, you're on, you're on. That's a better one. Good, it's good. There we go. Yep. Yes, okay, softening now, just, yeah, we, this is the bit we're gonna lose. Yep. If you panic him and he goes to reef, he's gonna do you, so just kind of coax him into thinking nothing's wrong, and that's just slow rod work. Good fish, good fish. Real good one. Here we go. How exciting is this, mate? That's what we want to feel. Got a good buckle happening in that rod. Good head shakes. This could be a good one. The snapper grows to around um, over a metre and 10 to 15 kilos, so it can grow to a massive fish. Loves the cooler waters, but it will stretch up into the tropics. And you can find it both coasts of Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, China, Japan, places like that, so it's pretty widespread. But different, slightly different genetics and different populations of fish. It's an intriguing, Reef critter, this one. Ah, there he is, it's a snapper. Better than the last yes. one. Yes. Slide him in. Bring him in there, yes! Yes! Ah, now we're rocking. Ah. Oh, good work, mate. They are getting bigger. Whoa. They are getting bigger. You beauty. Good couple <laughs> of kilos social. of soft plastic munching snapper. You're doing very well, mate. Loving it. Oh, I'm gonna come up on the sounder now. Look at that, up 15, 20 metres. Oh, that's a feeding school. Just watch, watch these lines now. They're gonna go, it's on the back of that. Yes, they just had to be there. Still there? Yep. Yeah, nice. Doesn't know it's hit yet. No, it's all right. I'm trying to leave these other rods in there because there's a big pack yeah. of fish down there. Oh, cool, similar size of the first one, possibly. There's still fish coming through the sand. Oh, there we go. There's nothing better than school snapper fishing. Yeah. In we go. Not as big as your last one, but. Okay. Yep, yep. Go, go. Yes. That's a good one. Something has come and eaten the bait. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, too. Yes. Schooling fish. When you find one, you can get them on the chew. It can get chaotic really quickly. What it's trying to do now is run to the only bit of security it knows, which is the reef. And if it touches the reef, this game is over. It's nothing better than when you hear the sound of braid flying off a reel at rate of knots and you know no one's casting. It's just a fish that has picked up a midwater soft plastic or bait and it is tearing away with it. Snapper have got such good eyesight. They're so aware of their environment that they'll pick up food a long way away from where they are. You can never underestimate their eyesight. We've put cameras down on these fish before and watched them from 10 to 15 metres below come flying up and belting a bait and sucking it in in one foul gulp. And they'll do exactly the same with the plastic. So their eyesight and their speed off the mark is phenomenal. I've got colour. Oh, this looks like a better one, Tim. Absolutely stronger. This one is a bumpy headed one. Need in, I'll bring it to you. Yes! yes. Woo! <laughs> yes! A big bumpy headed critter. This is the type of snapper fishing after. I wanted to show you, mate. Have a look at that, aren't they? Magnificent. Stunning. A characteristic of many of our snapper is the prominent and peculiar bump on their head. Not all populations of snapper have them. The scientists are still a little bit unknown as to why they get them, but they seem to be related to the type of reef structure that they live in. And you actually get them in other areas along their skeleton as well, so it's quite a funny little phenomenon that's very particular to the snapper. Mate, we are on a roll. Excellent. We are on a roll. Right, yeah. Yes! Oh mate, one half is gonna put that snapper in the esky and you're away! 
Oh, this is a good one. It's a good one. The bigger ones are coming through. We started with the a little mid-range, one and a half to two keggers. Yeah, the bigger ones are coming. You having fun yet? Oh, this is awesome. Nice big head shakes. I'm loving it. Oh, don't you love that sound? Such a powerful fish. They've got those big flanks, big broad bodies, so they can use it in the in the current and the water, but that big paddle tail just got such good burst of speed. And you got colour. It is a snapper. Yes, beautiful snapper, mate. Okay, just Bring lead him around. into that net. Lead him in. Yes! Is that your biggest snapper yet? It is. Just, oh, so excited right now, this is we awesome. We are cracking your benchmarks, mate. And that was the idea of this trip, to catch you some big snapper on soft plastics. And that is what winter snapper school fishing is all about. Glorious pink colored fish. As juveniles, they live in the estuaries and deep water bays. They reach sexual maturity around 30 to 35 centimetres and they head out into the deeper water reef country and they'll live up to around 200 metres so they can handle the deep stuff. And I reckon we should keep catching them. Tim loves his fishing and has come today with great expectations. I'm very relieved that after him taking the time away from his daily life to come out with me, we have been able to catch a few fish. Now the aim is to try and help him catch bigger ones. Yes. Got him? No, that's now we know. Oh, there we yeah. go. Just go soft, soft, yep. soft, soft. No, just pressure stop him panicking. Yeah, yep. just stop him panicking. Just relaxing. Yep, just go soft. Really use the rod. If he finds that reef, this is the nervous bit. This is the nervous bit now. Yeah, just keep working him up slowly. Nice. If you can stop yeah, him panicking, down, you yeah. can just relax him. Gotta think relaxing thoughts. <laughs> relaxing thoughts. The moment they sort of, you can almost feel them go, oh, it's not quite as bad as mine, or relax a bit, and then just let water pressure do the job. That's what wears them out. You've got a good one. You have, have a, a one. chunky snapper. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's well, quickly tell us, Tim, what you love about fishing. I love the chase, I love just getting out, middle of nowhere, by yourself, chillaxing. It's nothing better, it really isn't. It's a good way of getting away from things for a while, but then also, Best of all, you can also get a nice feed out of it too, so love it. You can't argue with that. Got some colour, Nigel. And it's a good bit of colour too. Oh, look at this thing. Look at this guy. And I think your yes. biggest snapper just got a little bit bigger again. Yes. You're doing awesome. awesome. Right. It's hard to have a whole lot more fun on the wide open ocean. Isn't it? It does make the punt to go wide worth it because you can come all this way and catch absolutely nothing so that whenever you're driving this far that back of your back of your brain is thinking let this please be worth it there's a lot of fuel going into this we're getting wet we're getting knocked around when it's this happens it. it's all worth it if you have a look at these snappers teeth they tell you a whole lot about how they hunt and feed they've got these sharp solid canine style teeth so they're really good at grabbing squid and bait fish and the like but then just inside them there's these round molar style teeth which are perfect for crushing up tough baits like shells and crustaceans they're really opportunistic feeders they'll grab whatever they can when they're hungry i've come across charter boat owners that have found bizarre things like cigarette packets inside these fish so they'll have a crack at just about anything Snapper spawn when the water heads into the 16 to 19 degrees Celsius range and they can spawn two to three times if the conditions are right. It's the water temperature that triggers the movements of many of our marine animals. Here you go Tim, look, two, two big humpbacks coming through. It's one of the treats we get these days in late autumn and into winter. We have this migration that gets bigger every year of these humpback whales which come through. And from a fishing perspective, they tell us a lot about what's going on in the water. The water temperature is starting to drop. And when I start seeing those, I know the snapper season is about to kick off. I'm fishing in this deeper water for snapper. That is exactly the sounder that I want to see. A lot of distinct, discrete lines coming through. They're all packed together and importantly, they're up off the bottom. So they're going to be active fish. Watch, I think it's about to get exciting. Oh, go, go. Watch out. You got him, go, go, go. You got him. There we go. Oh, no. Figured that had to be there. Oh, yeah. Had good seeing that line just get peeled off. Come on. Thought it was good when Tim couldn't get the bail arm back over yeah. the <laughs> A very addictive style of fishing mm. to see. Lines go flying off. You cannot get the bail arm over. It's panic stations. 
All right, now we've got to watch these other rods because there were so many snapper came through there that I'm thinking we may get another bite here. There you go, I'm out. <laughs> Thought maybe things were about to get hectic then. <laughs> Very much school sized fish, the sounder lit up with them. If you can get your baits and plastics into them, stands to reason it's all gonna go a little bit crazy. There he is. The school sized fish. Throw him in there. Double trouble. Well done. Yes, well done. There's a lot to love about fishing like that. Well, it's awesome catching them when they're this size, but I reckon looking at that sounder, there just might be a few bigger ones in there. Let's get these out of the way and get back in the water. Let's get some bigger ones. Yep, got it. Yeah, you got it. Yep. Oh yeah. Got some going in? Yep. Sat on it. Mm, it's played with it, mouthed it. it. Hasn't taken drag yet, but we get. No, it's, it's not bad, it's better than the last one. It might be starting to get bigger. Different schools of fish cruising through. We just gotta pluck the numbers out. Mm, it's definitely snapping. Yeah, I'll get it. The snapper continued to move through and hunt in the deeper waters beneath us. And it seems as if Tim is constantly hooked up. It's easy to see that he knows how to fish and I sense that there's every chance following this trip, he's gonna be very addicted to snapper fishing in our offshore waters. I'm a fat little fish though, aren't I? Oh. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> aren't they a glorious looking fish? Pink, blue iridescent spots. And during spawning, the acid levels in these fish change and it does slightly alter the color of those scales. It's got a big, broad tail, which allows it to feed as both a reef fish and a pelagic species. So in 100 meters of water, this guy can feed nearly from the top to the bottom. The characteristic bump that you sometimes see on the snapper was recognized by early Europeans. And in fact, they called these fish the light horsemen in light of some of the wartime wear that the early cavalry used to wear. A very impressive feature of these fish. Tim is fast mastering deep water lure fishing for snapper. And I quietly noticed some really large dark red blotches on the sounder, suggesting a big fish or two have moved into our zone. Oh, yeah. Told you to be back. Mm. Might be a better one. It is. Yes. It feels better. Oh yeah. That's the go. Yes. I missed one on the boat at the same time. There's some school action happening now. Yeah, get him off that bottom yeah, a bit. He's off now. He's so. sure, because yep. they can wake up and get all the way back really quickly. Yes. Good. It's got some go. Come on, mate. Had a great little session. It's been fantastic, to be honest with you. Been awesome. Oh, look at him coming up. Look at him coming up. You got a proper one this time. Where's that net? Where's the net? Oh, look at this thing. Here we go. Bring him in. Bring him in. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. That is a fish! Look at this thing! <laughs> oh, look what you have caught! <laughs> right, look what you have caught. Now you were awake at two o'clock this morning, excited about this trip. Has it lived up to expectation? Mate, it's been everything and, and more. It's been absolutely sensational. Um, knocking a few snappers all morning. Yeah, C can't think of anything better, so. We might have to do it again, mate. What do you reckon? Oh, anytime.